Welcome aboard the Boat Buyer Secret Weapon Podcast, where we're dedicated to helping first-time and experienced boaters find the right boat at the best price and ensure all boaters have years and years of happy boating fun because life truly is better on a boat. Today's podcast is sponsored by the Best Boat Captain on the Water Training. It takes the stress, frustration, and swearing out of those dockings and other tough situations so you can have total control of your boat or pontoon. Visit bestboatcaptainonthewater.com for a short video and all the details. Now, let's hop aboard and have some fun. Welcome to the Boat Buyer Secret Weapon Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Matt, and today we have Robert from Dayton, Ohio. Robert has just gone through the process of ordering his um, his first pontoon. It's a Harris, and Robert, thanks for joining us here today. Thank you for having me. So we were on um, one of the YouTube lives that I do every Sunday at 8.30 Eastern time the other night. One of the Michael who, um, who's been a, a longtime watcher of the videos and the podcast suggested, hey, it would be great to interview some folks that have recently bought a boat and hear about their experience. So I interviewed Michael that bought a jet boat. Um, Robert said, hey, I would be interested in doing that, you know, sharing my experience. And, and so here's Robert. We've got another one that's a center console buyer that's on the 10th. Um, but Robert, I appreciate you volunteering <laughs> to jump on here with me that's and just and sharing your experience because it's a it's a different time. And I think it's valuable for somebody to share. Here's what I liked. Here's what I didn't. Here's what caught me by surprise. So just tell everybody about what you ordered, uh, and then we'll go into the whys and the experience. Okay. Uh, we ordered a, it, it's not going to be a, a 2022 Harris 210. Uh, so it's uh, 22 and a half foot, 22 foot 10, something like that. Uh, we upgraded to the Performance One package, which is the three quarter center tune. Um, we were back and forth about the 115, the 150. We settled on the 150, which I'm thrilled with. Um, and just added yep. a couple of extra stuff. We added, you know, the swim platform on the back and the, and the ski tow bar, um, a few minor upgrades as far as, uh, you know, higher help seats, uh, just some, some little odds and ends, just a, more, more of the creature comforts, I would say, uh, yeah. of the boat. So um, thrilled to have it. Um, we were originally going to wait and build in the spring. Um, it was one of those I just didn't want to pay for it to sit all winter long. Uh, by the time yes. we got it, you know, come time, end of September here in Ohio, you know, we have snow in October. So, um, and then, uh, we were going to wait and kind of understood that, Hey, the price is going to probably fluctuate a little bit, um, go up, um, just because of you know, the times and, and price increases come, you know, beginning of the new year. And, um, actually, uh, got a call from my dealer the other day saying, Hey, I got your price locked in. We got to build early because Good. the price increase was going to be significantly more than what we had anticipated. I said, you know what? Great. Just tell me when I got to come pick it up. So we're, uh, we're set to build here in about two weeks, start building. And uh, we'll pick up somewhere in the January, February, March ish range uh, when it okay. gets they get perfect and stuff like that. So let let's talk about because I think that's interesting. Robert is the pricing. It's a it's a weird time when I was selling boats ten years ago. It was hey ten percent deposit. We order it. We lock in pricing and. That's what it is. I, I never experienced in all the ordered boats I did having to call somebody and saying, oh, crap, <laughs> this is not a phone call I want. But how did they explain it to you? And and what was it like dealing with the negotiation as you were going through the, the ordering process? Um, so, uh, you know, uh, shout out to you. Um, the, you know, we, we had kind of been thinking about getting one. And then it was I stumbled upon your first couple of YouTube videos of, you know, you, you went through a great detail of the, of the different levels of pontoon tritunes, the manufacturers, who owned what, who owned who. Um, so that was really the kickstart for me. Um, just watching a couple of your videos and it was, you know, real quick kind of, I didn't want the, you know, go to Bass Pro Home Depot and our Bass Pro or Cabela's and buy just the low end low. But I also knew, you know, the Barletta's and some of those were going to be well outside of my uh, you mm -hmm. know price range for what we're doing. I mean, it's one thing when you like, you know, trailering it in and out versus living on a lake where you can walk out 50 feet out your backyard, jump on your boat and you can use it every day. Um, so, you know, watching a few of your videos quickly narrowed it down to we, we looked at Harris's, uh, we looked at uh, the Sweetwaters and we looked at Sun Chasers. Those were kind of where we narrowed it down to. Good. Uh, we've got some bigger dealers in our, in, you know, the Southwest Ohio area. Um, we've got a lot of nice, uh, you know, lakes and, you know, the Ohio River is only about, you know, 45 minutes to an hour down the road from us. Um, so, 
you know, going through the options and this and that and the other. And then when we kind of settle on, okay, here's our budget. This is where we're comfortable being. Um, and, you know, the Harris dealer that I had called, and I had called a couple of different Harris dealers, you know, from basically Detroit all the way down to about, you know, Louisville. And uh, our the very first phone call I had made when we ever started talking about a boat, um, our dealer down in Cincinnati, um, he gave me the best price up front and he, his price was better than the Godfrey's and, you know, the Sweetwaters and the, the Sun Chasers, which was a bit of a shock to me because after having watched your videos, I was anticipate that Harris being, you know, on the higher end and he actually came in on the lower end and I was, I was thoroughly shocked. So um, it made, you know, the purchasing a lot easier. He was very responsive. We worked with a great dealer. Um, you know, I, I'm a first responder. So they, you know, Harris was running like a $250 thing, you know, kind nice. of, kickback, which was like, you know what, Hey, it gave me one little extra option that I wasn't going to buy because I got that little bit of discount. So, you know, that was just a nice little perk uh, that I appreciate that, you know, I, I want to say it swayed our decision to go that way. Um, but it helped a little bit, like I said. Yeah. Just, nice to be recognized for, for what you do. Yeah. Um, okay. So, that, that's interesting. There's a couple, and, and again, you said a few more interesting things that I, I really like is you said, we narrowed it down to the manufacturers that we liked. And then you started looking at price. You're like, Hey, I like these things. I like the dealers. Then you started looking at price and making sure that the dealer was right for you versus just saying, this is the one I'm going to get no matter what, or I'm going to, you know, I'm shopping everything and I'm just going to take the best deal. You sort of put both of those together in a smart way, which I, I really, I, I think is going to benefit you five years from now. You're going to be even happier. Absolutely. And one of the things we found too was, especially with some of the other manufacturers was um, they were having a hard time getting the motors. Um, I would call a couple of dealers and this, and, you know, one of the dealers I told you goes, I've got 30 boats sitting on my lot. I can't get motors for them. And, yep. you, know, they're telling, you know, the Yamahas and the Suzuki's and the Mercury's are all, you know, so many weeks out. Well, you know, after again, watching one of your videos and talking with the dealer coming to find out that Harris falls under that umbrella that, you know, Mercury owns and, and our dealers like, yeah, we can get motors. No problem. As long as we're ordering with the boats. I'm like, well, that's, you know, that was another big seller knowing I was going to get a boat with a motor ready to go rather than get a boat and may have to wait three to four months and hope I get a motor. Yeah. Yeah. Having that Brunswick, the Brunswick owned company is there, you know, it's a big, huge corporation. There are some downsides that come with it in certain respects, but right now in this pandemic, having the, you know, they're made in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, and mm -hmm. Hey, that you don't, they're not sitting off the coast of California waiting to get in here. They're, they're here. And, um, that, that's awesome. And, and you probably won't have any delays on your production. Yeah. So as you were, as you were going through the ordering process and the shopping experience, uh, th this is the first boat you bought, right, Robert? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. First boat. Okay. What What was interesting? What was unexpected? What kind of like, oh shit, you know, I didn't that that really caught me off guard. Anything like that that jumps out at you? Uh, yeah, I mean, believe it or not, the whole process again, first boat for us ever, and you know, I guess not realizing that you know, you know, my parents have had had a boat before, an older one, but again, it's you know, when you get into the new stuff, it, it just seeing the level of options you can look at what there is i mean just you know it, it, it was very shocking just the amount of stuff that you could put on a boat yes um, and then just you know you could get a boat for that you know that thirty thousand dollars or some of the ones you know decked out double motors this and that. you're up in the hundreds of thousands <laughs> I mean, hundreds of thousands for a a pontoon boat was blew me away absolutely yeah. blew me away i i just i you know, so I, and kudos to those people that have that lifestyle. I'm not one of them, but yeah, when, when I, you know, I was looking at, especially when you, the Barletta's and some of those higher brands, it was, oh my goodness. I, I, I just couldn't, it, it caught me off guard. Um, all the options you can put on a boat, um, the different configurations you can put on a boat and, you know, just how s the price point sways from your low end entry model all the way up to your high end luxury, you know, it can almost drive itself. Model. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, could you tell you've been around boats, you know, with your family having one, could you tell the difference when you looked at the value models, you know, the, the sun tracker at Bass Pro to looking at the Sweetwater, the Sun Chaser, the Harris, and then the Barletta? W did you notice, oh, I see the $30,000 difference or the $50,000 difference or were you like, I don't get it. Why is this one better than that one? 
if you, you know, take the time to go look at them in person, if you have the ability, yes, you can definitely tell a difference. And, you know, I, I'm not going to knock any one of them. Um, you know, there's, there's an entry, you know, there's a level pontoon boat for everybody. And everybody exactly. Can. So, yes, but you will notice the difference when you go look at them. You, you know, you start off with your Ford Focus and you go all the way up to your Bentleys and your Rolls Royces. I, you definitely notice a quality difference. Yep. Um, just as far as, you know, how things are made, the decking, uh, the quality of the stitching, in the vinyl, the way the seats are made up, you know, you can get leather inserts on some of these. Um, we looked at a couple of videos that had, you know, rotating bars and mini bars <laughs> and second decks. And I'm thinking, Oh my, you know, it was, so yes, there was a, a noticeable difference when you start again at that Ford focus and go all the way up to that Bentley or the Ferrari uh, and, you know, cars and pontoons, but very, very much the same way. You can, yeah. you know, Jane get you to point A to point B all the way up to, I just want to get on it, relax you know, and just have the time of my life. And I, you know, yeah. So. And, and I think, and, and it sounds like you did this knowing what you're going to be, ha you're going to be happy with this. Yeah. There's something better. Yeah. There may be something on the lower end or, Hey, this is the, this is the most I can afford, but I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be taking it out in super rough conditions. And I'm not going to be loading it up with 20 people. Uh, this is going to fit, make me happy quality wise. And, give me the boating lifestyle that I want. And I think that's what's important. There's not a right or a wrong. There is a right for Robert. There's a right for me. There's a right for my neighbor, which could be my best friend, same economic class, but just we have different needs. And, and I think it's really smart, like what you did is to pause and think about how are we going to use this and inspect a bunch of them. How many do you think you inspected if, if you were to... Overall, and again, when we first started, I looked at some of the low and some of the, you know, some of the other brands. We went and looked. I personally went and looked um, at probably twelve to fifteen boats. Good. Different manufacturers. Um, had an opportunity to take my wife and you know the kids down when we went down to not really finalize, but really get good hands on the Harris. Um, and we were very fortunate when we went down that they actually had a boat, another customer boat that had just come in. <laughs> that was probably a 95% match to what we'd ordered. I mean, down Perfect. to the color and everything. So we really got to crawl around underneath it, look at it, sit in the seats. And that experience alone was great because, you know, I, I'm a big guy. I'm, you know, I'm 6'4", 350. So it, it's just even sitting in a, a regular bag helm seat and having the opportunity to sit in the high back, that was an instant change we made because, oh my God, the seat was so much more comfortable for somebody of, of my stature. Right. So, you know, you get a lot of these people and get out and, and do the work, you know, do your research online and then get out and put the leg. We're going to go find, if you got to drive 45 minutes to an hour, you know, make a day out of it, take your wife and kids, have a you know, meal, go look at these boats, sit in these boats. Um, because, you know, like you've said countless times, you don't want to get your boat and realize it's underpowered or the seat's not the way I want it to, or this and that and the other. And you've only got yourself to blame because you'd rather just click around the internet and not get your feet dirty. Yeah. And I, I don't know about you, but. I really enjoy going to look at boats, even when I'm not in the market. I, you know, you said make a day of it. You know, most of these are going to be in a nicer area, uh, maybe on the water. And you can go check out four or five. They're going to be usually close around four mm -hmm. or five dealers in one afternoon. Stop for lunch, maybe on the water. And um, it, it can be a family outing. It can be the start of your boating lifestyle, uh, which is which is perfect. You, you mentioned kids. What's your family makeup look like? Uh, I've got a, uh, 11 year old and a 10 year old. Okay. Um, both girls. No, one of each. Okay. Perfect. So we're, we're still in that age group of, they still want to hang out with us, but they're starting to get to that point where like, dad, you're boring, mom, you're boring. So this was kind of one of those, I don't want to say it's a grasp to get, you know, the more family time back, but that was a big drive was, um, we used to have a camper, uh, didn't get to use it as much as we wanted to just due to, you know, kids sports, you know, a lot of, what a mm -hmm. lot of through and you know that we sold the camper and kind of decided let's get a boat because you know we can get done with that baseball game or soccer game first thing in the morning and we can be on a uh, various numbers of bodies of water from where we're located at within about an hour to an hour and a half and have the entire day to just hang out as a family and relax yep i've got i've got two girls that are seven and ten and yeah. it's the same thing it's the the times right now between when they're 14 15 it's going to be, it's just, it's different. And, um, and the good thing about the boat, I grew up with it. When I was in college, my parents would come out for some reason, my parents let me keep the boat at the Marina that I worked at in college. 
<laughs> and uh, so I could put it in and be out with my friends. And then mom and dad and my younger sister would come out. I lived with my brother in college. And I was spending, you know, when I was 18, 19, 20 years old, I was spending Saturday, Sunday afternoons on the boat with my parents, with my college friends, and they kind of got to keep an eye on me. And, you know, it, it worked out great. Um, there's something about bringing the family together in that environment that is, is tough to beat. Absolutely. So what, um, what else did you experience? Anything that was, I don't say a negative, but anything that you said, man, I wish I would have done this different or anything that, um, advice that you have for somebody that's in your shoes six months ago. Yeah. Um, right now, nothing I can think of different. Um, just wading through the amount of options, the dealers, the, the, the brands, um, you know, I, I'm sure once the boat gets here and we get out on the water next spring, I'll go, Oh, I wish I would have done that. I wish I would, you know, done this. And, you know, unfortunately some of the things that you can either live with them or you can get them tweaked at the end, you know, as long as you start off with a good set of bones. So yes, you know, and your motor size, your boat size. And the biggest thing, like you mentioned earlier is everybody's going to have a different boating lifestyle, what they expect. So, that's what you need to sit down, I think, and really figure out, you know, whether yourself, your family, your spouse, what kind of boating are we going to do? Are we going to be on the ocean? Are we going to be on, you know, are we more of a lakes, you know, are we more of a, a rivers type, you know, family, you know, then, okay, you know, setting your family of four or five, 10, whatever you have and go, okay, we'd like to have, you know, so-and-so, this family come with us, this family come with us, making sure you get enough boat and motor uh, for the, the style of boating and the amount of people you want to have, you know, you don't want to go out and buy a 26 foot boat and have two people on it. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Yep. Uh, yep. But if you, you need that 26 foot boat, if you're planning on bringing mom, dad, brothers, uncles, cousins, you know, <laughs> neighbors next door, and you've got 10, 12, 14 people on a boat, you want to make sure that you're, you're safe, you're enjoying yourself and you, and you've got the room to do that. Absolutely. Did you and your wife and your, and your kids sit down and talk about Hey, what do you really want to do? How did you approach that lifestyle question? You had the experience with your your family's boat growing up, but but how did you approach that? Uh, the kids they were just excited, uh, you know. They're, they're boat, young, yes, they, yeah, they can tell us what they want, and it was as long as they can get out on the boat and we can go too, and that's all they're really worried about. But yeah, <laughs> me and my wife, it was definitely okay, and, and she's she doesn't know a lot about the boating, you know, boats, but it was you know we sat down again. Kudos to you. Your videos have been fantastic. Uh, we just recently purchased the best boat cabin in the water so she could be more comfortable because I kind of told her, I said, when we, we get to that point, it's either you're back in the trailer in the water or you're pulling the boat on the trailer. <laughs> you're, 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 which one of these you want to do? Um, and, and, you know, I'll do the other one because, you know, I'm comfortable either way. And, and she, you know, she said, well, you know, let's try the driving thing. I'm like, great, we'll, we'll buy, the, we'll buy the, the, the kits and we'll, you can watch the videos. And, you know, come spring when it's cold and there's not a lot of people on the water, we'll go out. You, get, we you got it. Off, you know, pick a random Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, but, yeah, sitting down with her, just explaining the different options, uh, going over some things. Uh, you know, again, watching, you know, the videos, uh, you know, doing, you know, a lot of these websites anymore are great with like build a boat. So you can really get a good idea of, of what they are, um, you know, taking, you know, the spouse, whoever it may be to show them, Hey, this is what this does. This is what that does. You know, uh, even just the other day, we were watching it one of your videos again and, uh, it, you know, the, you were talking about the lifting strikes and she was looking at it. She's like, what's those orange things on those tubes? I'm like, those lifting strikes, they're going to get up out of the water a little bit better. Oh, I thought that was part of this, this, and this. No. And so, you know, with, it, with us, it was both a learning experience for the both of us. Um, but yeah, just sitting down, talking with her, showing the different options, telling her what this can do, what that can do um, was huge. And it made her a lot more comfortable. Uh, with Good. It. I, I love it when you reference a video that, and, and that was the whole point of the channel is to get that information, to make it easier. And that leads me to my next question is there's so many options. There's so many brands there's so many ways you configure it. How did you deal with that overwhelm of, Oh my gosh, like we want a pontoon and now I've got 20 different brands. I've got pontoon, tritune, I've got motors, I've got, you know, high back recliners, low back recliners, fishing options. How did you sort through all of those um, choices. Um, it was it, it. It started first with okay, what are we going to use the boat for? Now we fish, you know, we do fish, but we're definitely casual fishermen. We're not on the lake every weekend trying to catch, you know, the tournaments. So we, you know, that for us, it kind of took the fishing. You know, you can definitely get the boat set up for fishing. The pond sure fishing. So we knew that was not that's not what we wanted. Ours was going to be more of okay, you know, we cast a rod off here, there, sit in the back, relax. It was definitely more of a. Um, from the beginning, we wanted something we can relax on, bring another family with us, four or five, six people at the most, 
Um, we could, the kids could tube off the back. We could swim off the back. Um, and then, I, you know, our area too, you've got, I think, it, you know, I don't want to say it helped or hurt, but it, I think it did a little bit of both where we were limited on, this is the dealers we have. This is the brands they sell. You know, I'm sure, you know, down your area or along the coast, mm -hmm. you're a boat dealer every 500 feet. Whereas, you know, in my area, there are few and far between. So it, I, I want to say it limited it, but it did of what brands we could go for, which was fun. And I think that helped in the matter of make the decision a little easier because I wasn't having to sort through 10 or 15, 20 different dealers with 20 different manufacturers. Um, but then it also, I think, uh, hurt a little bit because I didn't have those other options without having to drive a significant distance. Uh, sure. Those kind of boats. Okay. Um, so, uh, but, you know, like you see, you know, some of the other options, again, it's going and sitting, going and seeing, putting hands on to see what you're comfortable with, what you like, uh, you know, it, it is as minuscule as this may sound of all those, you know, the three or four brands we looked at, uh, one of the big sellers for me on this Harris, we got the, the, the single rear lounger, um, okay. their package in the back is you lift up part of that seat and there's an integrated self-draining cooler in there. And I'm like... <laughs> Every function have this. So I love it. Is as tiny as that was, it's like, you know what? That's one less thing I gotta have in the middle of the deck, you know, moving around. So yeah, if I could lift up a seat and you know have a bag of ice and some Capri Suns and a, you know, whatever, it was just something so small it was like, oh, that's you know, one little check mark in that box that we really liked a lot. Um, and then just having some of the options, knowing we wanted that extra swim deck. And you know, there's some boats, some manufacturers can't provide that. Uh, we like the fact that, you know, uh, I will say one thing that the, um, the uh, Sun Chaser had, I did like the way their rear deck was set up. They had more of like a Harris's, you know, the chains. It's, you know, clip the chain on the, yep. on, you know, off the side <clears throat> of the tow bar, whereas the Sun Chaser had more of like a, a metal door frame. Um, okay. Yeah. Which is a little bit more secure. Um, now, you know, another, you know, minuscule selling point on the Harris that we got was we got the extender railing in the back and it came with the, the, the bumper holders. So rather than have to try and flip a seat up and throw them underneath there, I drop them in these little cages that are already built in and they're there. I don't have to worry about scrambling to get somebody up off a seat, grab it, slap it on the railing or backing or, you know, pulling up to another boat and we're good to go. Yep. Um, so. Okay. That, that's, I just, I always, I, I always think about that for a first time boater, I remember sitting down and doing the ordering process. And, and you may know I sold Harris, um, for, you know, the whole time I was selling, we had that line, um, but have been through that process. And there's just, you go down the build sheet or you're going down on the, you know, build a boat and you're like, what exactly is, you know, the, the P one sports tube, how yeah. does that differ than the P three sports tube? It, you know, if you don't have a, a good salesperson helping you through it, and some of them, you're like, well, you can't put this with that. And you have to, you know, the difference between the high back recliner and the low back recliner um, and how, you know, is it worth it? That was a question I answered all the time. Um, I'm just, you've got to just go slowly, I think, and ask the questions to, to make sure that you're making the right choice. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, one thing you said, having a great salesman, um, we were very fortunate, like I said, from the very first, he was the first phone call we made. I made when we were talking about boats and having that great salesman to tell you, yeah, you know, like you said, the difference in just adding the sport package or the full third tune or what motor can go with this, or do I need to add that? Cause you'll get some dealers that, Oh yeah, you can do a, B, C, D and G. And you know, we're going to take you up $20,000 and you don't need half of it. Yeah. Uh, or they're going to tell you, Oh yeah, you can, you don't need this. You don't need that. And you get on the water and you're not happy with the way your boats performing because you didn't add this, you know, couple hundred or a thousand dollar, 2000, whatever upgrade it might be. Yeah, uh, and and like you say you know, again, that having a great salesman goes a long way. Um, Do you so, want to mention the dealer that you uh, that you bought? The, the the dealer we use is a uh, Sea Rave Cincinnati. Okay, uh, they are right down on the Ohio River. I mean, you walk out the back, and you know, in ten feet, you're down the cliff into the water. Okay. Uh, so and it, we we looked at like I said, I, I we looked at dealers from basically Detroit all the way down to Lexington, um, and all the way over to Indianapolis, even into Western Pennsylvania, just making phone calls talking about, you know, different boats, um, pricing and stuff like that. And, you know, I had some great salesmen that I talked to along the way. Um, I had some not so great, oh, here's your price. Let me send you an email type thing. And, and you could definitely tell the ones that want your business and the ones that that could care less because either their, their volume is so great that they don't need everybody they want. That guy's going to come in and, and drop that stack of cash on their on their desk and walk out with the fancy boat with all the bells and whistles. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I know the I know the GM there at at C Ray of Cincinnati actually Ed, um, and um, so I, I'm familiar with them, and they will they'll take great care of you. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, as you went through the experience, and now you're getting ready for delivery, in, you know it's going to go in the production December. So what what do they say a, a sixty day ninety we, day build? We start build on the the thirteenth, uh, which is a Monday. So I don't know how you know they always say you don't want nothing to build on Monday or Friday, but we'll we'll roll the dice and see what happens. <laughs> um, and yeah, he said we've been told somewhere around the end of end of January to middle of February. Okay, uh, with with you know end of February, early March not being out of the realm, just depending on you know supplies and weather and stuff like that. So yeah. Okay, good. Well, that's that's good to know. A real life build process currently um, mm-hmm. is not too far off. Um, you know, a normal a normal yeah. uh, flow of mm-hmm. uh, sixty to ninety days. So that's perfect. Any other advice that you have for for pontoon shoppers specifically? And did you know right out of the gate that the pontoon was the right style for you all? Yeah. Um. You know. Yes, because I, we wanted that big, wide open deck. A lot of you know the stability uh, was the biggest thing, especially for my wife. Um, she didn't want something, you know, you know, V nose and stuff like that. Uh, the deep holes, they're great for certain people. Um, she was not one of those. She wanted something that was a little more stable. Wasn't going to have that rocky motion all the time yep. where, you know, and where we're going to be at, uh, what we wanted to do, uh, the space we wanted to have, you know, the, the pontoon was definitely going to be the boat for us right off the bat. Did you all have, and I don't want to get too personal here, but the dealing with the husband and wife and maybe some different attitudes about money, different attitudes about options and what's important to one and what's important to the other. How did you have those conversations with your, with your wife as you were going through the process? Cause I'm sure there was some back and forth of, you know, I've got this opinion, you've got that opinion. And how do we come to a final conclusion? Any advice there? Um, yeah. The, the first thing we did was kind of sit down and it was, you know, let's get some, some quotes first. Um, because we we just kind of wanted to see where we were going to be at in the in the realm of pricing. What, what's the ballpark look like of where we want to be? Exactly. Yes, and that's where we started at. So that that was a good first stepping stone for us. Was okay. I knew where we could comfortably be financially, um, but then it was okay. Let's see if that bubble of our financial window met up with what we wanted in a boat. Yep. Uh, and we, we were very fortunate. So yeah, you know, some of them got a little bit higher, and it was like okay. You know, that might not be the boat for us um, or we can, you know, get rid of option A, B and C. Um, but, we, you know, when we settled, we were, we were very comfortable where we were at. Um, as far as options, it, we were both the same way. It was more of, you know, we wanted a big deck. We want this one platform off the back. We wanted this, the ski tow bar, you know, the ladder built in. That was, which was great because that was pretty much what the both of us wanted together. Um, the other little, you know, add on options was more of a, okay, a luxury thing, you know, so for me, you know, the, the high back helm seat, that was a, a more of a me thing. Um, we upgraded just some other minor stuff, you know, mm. steering. Um, and for the most part, that was it just some minuscule things, more of a comfortability standpoint um, than it was a necessity standpoint. Um, so, yeah, I was very fortunate. My wife was, you know, as long as we've got A, B, and C, the kids are happy. I'm happy. We can add a little bit, take a little bit here or there. Um, and that's, that's what it was. So yeah, the biggest thing I can tell people is, um, you know, make those first couple phone calls, kind of get, you know, an idea of where you think, you know, what do you think your boat with all the options you want is going to cost and then sit down and go, okay, you know, here's where we can be at, um, you know, without starting a fight. Cause I know, how that <laughs> um, I think, you know, most married couples do, uh, and just get yourself that, you know, financial window of where you, where are you comfortable at? you know, for the next 10 or 12 years, however many years you're paying for your boat, what do you want to get out of the boat and and go from there? Yeah, that's great. And and I like the, the getting your budget and then getting that ballpark figure, not necessarily exactly what we're going to do. And it's what I teach in the first time boat buyers Academy is budget first, what is comfortable for you. And then what, what exactly would we, would we get does that match or do we need to make some adjustments one or the other, uh, whichever one makes the most sense or a little bit of both. Um, what did you find? I, I assumed you built a boat online. Um, what did you find from the build a boat price to the actual price that they were quoting you to buy that boat in this market? Were they similar? Were there some discounts? Um, believe it or not, most of the build a boats were higher than um, what I ended up getting quoted from the dealer. Um, whether okay. it's some of the discounts or, you know, I, I, I assume some of the build a boat stuff is, you know, the, the markup is different, obviously in different areas, but yes, um, all the ones we did, you know, build a boat online, uh, the pricing came in higher, 
uh, some of them significantly, you know, ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars higher than what the actual quote was um, that we got on paper from the dealers. Okay, so there's a as you're looking at that ballpark budget, know that the build a boat in most situations, other than Sun Tracker, is a um, it, this is the price is the price is the price, and yep. there's some like that. I think low is going to that now uh, as well. But there's a, a little bit of room that you're going to have for negotiation. Were you able to negotiate it all on that then dealer price that you got? Uh, not, I mean, I don't want to say I pushed awfully hard because, again, I thought I got a pretty good price. Um, okay. Now, it, you know, after a little bit back and forth, and, you know, again, Harris was given, you know, that first responder discount. So anyway, I was getting a little bit off there. Um, and then, uh, uh, you know, one of the little, I don't even want to call it a stickler, but one of the particular things that we were back and forth was uh, the, the, as stupid as it sounds, the ladder off the back. I wanted to make sure that it was going to be sturdy. But again, you know, I told you I was a pretty good guy. Yeah. Go climb up out of the water and this thing's not going to fall apart on me. So we were back and forth a little bit on that um, and ended up getting the actual upgraded ladder thrown in. Um, you know, they included that in for us uh, with no additional charge. So I appreciated that. Um, so, yeah, did I, you know, beat them up for thousands of dollars? No, but did I get a little bit of something out of it? Yes, I did. And again, just the the, the ease of of my salesman and all the questions he asked and the heartache I put him through, give me this quote, that quote. Um, it, to me, it was worth it to, you know, be at that price and not haggle so much because he made the buying experience so much better. Yeah. And, and it's, it's a balance that I, again, in the first time Boat Buyer Academy, I talk about this, but you've got the balance of getting the absolute rock bottom price and just beating them to death mm -hmm. versus, Hey, they've got to be there for me when I get warranty work and service and all the other things that you're going to go to them for learning the local water, maybe doing a, a delivery and training you on the boat some, and, and there's that balance is another $200 off really worth just ticking that guy off where he's going to say, Hey, Robert's kind of a jerk. When he comes in for service, just mm -hmm. know he's difficult. Exactly. Well, that or gets around in a small dealership. <laughs> yeah, you know, one of those warranty things that might be on the edge, you know, when you've had that good experience and you've not given him a hard time, hey, we can push this through versus, now, nah, bud, you're in trouble. You know, it was, I remember what you did to me, you know, eight months ago when you we built this thing and you beat Oh, me. yeah. Now you're going to pay for this on your own. Um, I will say one thing that just came to mind uh, that kind of, you know, you asked me earlier kind of what caught me off guard, something I, I guess I didn't realize. Uh, you know, whereas I see all these other boats, you know, fishing boats, bass boats, all these other, a lot of them come with trailers, pontoon boats and tritoons. You got to add the trailer. <laughs> I was not, you know, I'm getting all these prices. I'm like, oh, this is bad. And then I look through, it's like, oh, the trailer add-ons, an extra, you know, this many thousands of dollars. I'm like, wait a minute, don't boats come with trailers? Yeah. So that was one thing I will say, you know, we kind of jumped around a little bit, um, pricing out trailers. Um, we did not end up purchasing um, our trailer from uh, Sea Ray. We got it from a different dealer just due to, you know, saving a couple thousand bucks here or there. Um, but yeah, that was one thing that caught us both myself and my wife off guard was, wait a minute, don't all boats come with trailers? Apparently, apparently not. Yeah. <laughs> Get ready to purchase. Uh, keep that in mind that, yeah, all pontoon boats do not come with trailers. That's a great point because there's some that, you know, the, some are packaged up, boat motor trailer package, bass yeah. boats, it's real common. Uh, aluminum fishing boats, it's real common, but pontoons in most areas, it, they're separate. Yes. And, you know, I, four, five grand for your trailer yep. in that ballpark? Yeah, it, just depending on, you know, you want a single axle, double axle, uh, brakes, no brakes, uh, yep. that sort of thing. But yeah, you're in the, I would say from what I looked at, you're 35 to 55 easily um, on a trailer. And again, you know, that boils down to, again, brakes, axles, uh, powder coat versus galvanized. Um, that's yep. so yeah perfect yeah that is a great that is a great point because that that can put you well over your budget um and uh and if you need it you need it mm -hmm. so and so you guys are going to trailer the boat we um, are. Wh what are you doing for storage did you look at storage and insurance and some of those other expenses as you were looking at the budget yeah um and it, it was you know call the insurance company and, and kind of gave them the ballpark of what we were thinking we we're looking at and you know they gave it gave us an idea which again very reasonable um about where we were at with our camper uh maybe a little bit more um but it was one of those once you get a whole number of stuff like that you know exactly when it comes in give us a call we'll give you a hard price uh storage yeah another thing you know whether you're going indoor or outdoor uh you know in our case where you're going to be you know outdoor in the summertime um and then indoor in the winter um, okay winterized you know because again around here you know you're you're pushing it. october we've seen snow uh especially down in southwest ohio even so yeah you know that end of september when we're getting ready to tuck it away get it winterized and then it's going indoors until you know april or may 
Okay. Awesome. Well, Robert, this has been a great conversation. Um, anything else that you wanted to share? Uh, and I appreciate you volunteering to, to join me on this for sure and sharing your experience because I think it's valuable. But anything else that I didn't ask you that you're like, man, I, I wish I would have known or I want other people to know because I think it's going to help them? Uh, nothing that I can think of that you didn't ask me. Um, you know, I, I will say again, for those new you know, purchasers, uh, if you're you know, brand new to it, even if you've been for years, uh, take the time, watch your videos. Uh, you know, the quick YouTube 10, 15, 20 minute ones. Uh, so much of a wealth of knowledge that I, I greatly appreciate and thank you for, um, you know, for your years of having done it, the ins and the outs, you know, what to look for, what not to look for, uh, whether you're going brand new, whether you're going used, uh, you know, for all those listeners out there, definitely take the time to watch Matt's videos. Um, it, it's an invaluable tool uh, of somebody who's been in the business for, you know, 20, 30 plus years um, to know before you go spend, a, you know, a nice chunk of money and, you know, adjusting your lifestyle, you know, to, to purchase and, and have fun on and stuff like that. So yeah, my biggest thing is again, you know, take the time, watch the videos, uh, you know, shoot your emails, uh, you know, ask the questions you need to ask. You've been great about taking the time to answer those questions, you know, you know, the YouTube lives and stuff like that, the podcasts. Um, yeah, that's my biggest recommendation for anybody is, you know, take the time, watch the videos, do the research, uh, find out what you want, where your budget fits, uh, put your feet in the dirt, go look at boats, yes. boats. Uh, you know, it, it, take your kids and, and your wife or whoever's going with you to have them climb on the boats and look around and see what's comfortable for them, what's comfortable for you, because, you know, what might be 100% comfortable you may not work for them. So you got, you, you know, you need to find that happy medium that's going to be, you know, family friendly, happy for everybody. Yeah, I, I love that. Put Get your boots dirty and go look at boats. Um, one, it's fun, I, you know, I think. And, uh, but two, you're going to learn a lot and, and you're going to get a real sense for it. Were there any other, any other resources that you went to? Um, obviously, my channel's got over 230 videos on it now, and those are all free. And, and just, I, you know, there it is. Take it comments I try to respond to. We do the live Q&As every Sunday, but were there other resources as well that you went to that were valuable for you? Um, outside of just getting a hold of uh, even the manufacturers and having to send you the brochures and, and, and going through some of that stuff, diving into, you know, a lot of them anymore, you know, the build a boat online has a lot of good questions. Um, you know, a lot of good answers. Uh, you can do some research and, you know, back to Finding a good salesman, uh, finding a good dealer and a good yes. salesman. We're gonna, you know, I know my salesman I, between, you know, myself and him back and forth. There was fifty to sixty, even a hundred emails or phone <laughs> calls or even text messages of, hey, what's it gonna cost to add this? What is this? You know, what is this option versus this option? Um, so yeah, between your videos and you know, you've reiterated it multiple times. A good dealership and a great salesman are gonna make the the boat buying experience so much more enjoyable. It's gonna take so much stress off of you um, and, and it will make it a significantly smoother process. Yeah, exactly. And the once you, you haven't experienced this yet, but once you take delivery, a good dealer is even more valuable after the fact too, uh, which which with um, with the, the dealer in Cincinnati, I think you're gonna have an outstanding experience. So um, you're gonna get to experience that over the next six months. Um, to two years. So, well, hey, Robert, thank you so much for for joining and volunteering to do this. You're not getting anything out of it other than you get to talk to me for a little bit, which I don't know how valuable that is. But <laughs> you know, even one thing I said helps the next guy behind me, the next family to buy a boat. Great. Um, yeah, it's it's the least I can do, uh, having just gone through and experienced it, and you know, put the work in, and, you know, do the research. So yeah, if, if one thing I said can help somebody, awesome. Uh, excellent. And, and I love the community that's showing up in the YouTube channel. It, you know, we had another live last night. I don't know if you were on it or not, but, you know, I said something about live wells that was wrong. And Brock, who's going to be on on the 10th, said, hey, actually, it's a good thing to have a triangular live well. And I was like, why? And he, he explained it to me on the live. And it was valuable to have another another opinion and, and you sharing your experience. Now it's going to help more than one per person. Um, you know, it's, there's going to be hundreds of people, thousands of people that watch this over time. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank and, you. um, and we'll see you on the next live. Hopefully. Awesome. Sounds good, man. You have a great day. Thank you very much. All right. Take care, Robert. Let's pull up the anchor and run this podcast back to the dock. We'll be back again with another helpful and fun episode next time. If you'd like to be a guest on the podcast, visit boat buyers, 
secretweapon.com slash guest. And I'll help offer insights into your boat research and shopping experience. Also, we'd appreciate it if you took just two minutes to rate and review this podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. It helps others find us so we can help more boaters. By the way, if you already own a boat and experience a little stress handling your boat or pontoon in some situations, visit bestboatcaptainonthewater.com for a quick video and all the details. Now, before we go, I want to leave you with a few first-time boating tips for when you own your new boat. Number one, know your local boating laws, basic navigation rules, and how to operate your boat safely. It'll make boating even more fun for everyone. Two, be aware of your wake at all times and pay attention to no wake zones because you are responsible for your wake. When maneuvering at slow speeds, you can put out an enormous wake. If going slow, be courteous, save some fuel, and drop down to idle speed, just in forward gear to ensure there is no wake. This could save you an expensive ticket and will keep you from being that guy on your waterway. Number three, boats do not have headlights. They have docking lights, specifically made for seeing in tight quarters and docking. Do not turn your docking lights on while cruising down the water. It can blind other boaters and is very dangerous and, again, could save you an expensive ticket. Number four, follow the maintenance schedule for your boat. Change the oil, impeller, gear loop. Winterize if you need to winterize in your area. Inspect your trailer tires, bearings, and grease the hubs if you're a trailer boater to ensure you don't experience expensive and unnecessary repairs that will impact your boating time. Number five, always double check your plug is in, your battery is charged, and the fuel is full before heading out for a day on the water. It could just save your boating day. And if you're a trailer boater, I've got a few extra tips. Number one, at the boat ramp, prepare your boat, your gear, and your guests in the staging area. Then when you're ready, back down the ramp, unload the boat, head to the parking lot, and right back down to your boat to be fast and courteous to your fellow boaters and don't tie up that ramp unnecessarily. Next, use transom tie-down straps when trailing your boat. Very bad things can happen if you don't, and they do happen. Three, check everything in the boat is secure before heading down the road. Seat cushions, gear, keys, towels, even tubes and lily pads can get blown out when pulling your boat down the highway or interstate. And most important, have fun. Enjoy your boat and get on the water as much as possible because life truly is better on a boat. Until next time, this is your friend in boating, Captain Matt.